We recently surpassed 7,000 subscribers, and I want to give a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel already. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so because I have a lot more great content down the pipeline, so there will be no shortage of that. This being said, I want to talk about CMM Color Management Module. It's a topic that I have been wanting to cover for some time, and this is also the fourth time filming this video because there are technical glitches along the way every time I try to film them, so hopefully the fourth time is the charm and it will work out. But this being said, CMM is a program that runs in the background of our Mac and PC and is doing the color conversion of what we're seeing on our screen in real time. So I'm going to go over what CMM is and we'll talk about how that affects your display and your color management workflow. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. A common misconception I often hear about color management is to keep the color gamut the same throughout the entire workflow. For instance, if your camera captures and tag a file with sRGB, you should calibrate your display in sRGB, set all the settings in the program that you're using to sRGB, and then exporting that image out tag with sRGB color gamut. That is a very simplified way of looking at color management, and although that may help eliminate any color variations that may come out in the workflow, the color conversions are already happening in the background with or without you knowing about it. We also need to remember too that some of our devices or some displays cannot be calibrated to a color gamut other than the one that they have been set to from the factory. These include our laptop devices for both Mac and PC and also a all-in-one desktop PC, iMac, iMac Pro included. Most of these devices have the screen built in and for the most part they are calibrated from the factory with Display P3 or DCI-P3 and that is the only color gamut that you can go in and calibrate these display to. If you have an external display that are hardware or software calibrated, you would have more flexibility in choosing the color mode on a software calibrated display or on a hardware calibrated one such as the BenQ SW271 that I have here. You can go in and choose the color gamut that you want to do a hardware calibration on and if you want to do the calibration in sRGB, you can certainly do that. For this demo, I have calibrated this display to panel native, which is a much larger color gamut than sRGB. And panel native in BenQ parlance is a color gamut equivalent to Adobe RGB, but slightly larger and is utilizing all the colors that the panel can produce. So let's talk about color management module or CMM and what it really does in the background. This program is run in the background on Mac and PC and is doing the color conversion for us in real time. For instance, take an image tag with Adobe RGB. If you try to open that up on this display that have been calibrated to panel native without CMM, the colors will look drastically different right away. What CMM does in a very simplified way is that it takes in the Adobe RGB color gamut, is remapping all those colors to panel native, and is doing one more remapping of the colors back into Adobe RGB. This way, when we're viewing our image in a color aware program, we're always seeing the correct color gamut at any given time, provided that you have gone in to calibrate your display to a color gamut that is larger than what's tagged in the file. This is also going to simplify a lot of our workflow, meaning that we can bring in an image that is tagged with pretty much any color gamut and know that we're always going to be seeing correct or close to correct color at any given time. One more thing we need to understand too is that if we're using Adobe product, Rather than using the CMM from the computer operating system, Adobe has its own program that is doing the color conversion called the Adobe Color Engine, or ACE for short. I have four set of images that will demonstrate how CMM works. I'm doing this demo on a Mac, however, this will also work on PC. And I'll be using two programs, Photoshop and Lightroom. However, if you're using another color aware program, this should show the result in a very similar fashion as I'm about to show you now. Lastly, I'll be using my external hardware calibrated display. However, if you have an external software calibrated display or a built-in display to your laptop provided that you have gone in and calibrated, this demonstration will work as well. So let's start out with Photoshop. The first thing that I'm going to do in Photoshop is check my color setting. Do that by clicking on Edit, Color Setting. Shift Command K for Mac or Shift Control K for PC is the shortcut key that you can use. Once you're in a color setting, the first thing I'm going to do is under Working Space, sRGB, I have this set to my Display ICC profile and you should do that too. One tip that I have here is to scroll down to the very bottom and choose the ICC profile from this list here rather than choosing the Monitor ICC profile at the top 
Because if you choose the one at the very top, when you try to bring in an image that doesn't match with the ICC profile of the display, it's going to really ask you to convert that. Where if you choose the one on the bottom of the list here, it gives you more flexibility in using the profile that's tagged with the file ready. This way you don't have to convert that file into the display ICC profile. This being said, I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to bring the images to show you. So the first set of image that I have is the image of the Aurora Borealis. And this is a very saturated file, so you can really see much clearer. All right. So now you're seeing four of the same image up on the screen. However, those four are different. The very first one that you see there, this is Adobe RGB. I have Profoto RGB right next to it. On the bottom one, starting from the left, I have Display P3. And then the last one I have as RGB. This is showing us four different color spaces on our display. For the most part, when we're looking at the larger color space, Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, and Display P3, the colors look fairly similar to each other. There may be some differences here and there, but trying to see four images up can be confusing really quickly because our eyes are much better at comparing just two. So what I'm going to do is close out Profoto RGB, and I will also close out display P3. So now we're looking at these two images side by side and we can see that there is a clear difference between the one on the left that is Adobe RGB and the one on the right that is sRGB. This image is much more pronounced in terms of the color saturation so you're going to see that much more. In some of the other images that I have to show you will show you much less color variation but this is also going to give us some lesson along the way as well that not all images are going to be able to show the difference quite as clearly. So what we're seeing right now is true Adobe RGB and also true sRGB. What I can do to see if this Adobe RGB is working properly or not is to do a soft proof. And I can do that by going to view, proof setup, and what I'm going to do here is choose custom. In the custom setup, I have this setup to simulate sRGB. I'll press OK. And with this on right now, and you can double check that by clicking on view, and if you see a check mark in front of proof color, that means it is working. So now we can see that the two images on the left and the right is showing the exact same color. And this is both showing now sRGB. If I toggle that off, you can see that the colors become saturated right away, especially in the green of the Aurora Borealis and also the deep blue sky. I'll toggle on again. You can see the color becoming less saturated, match with sRGB and on again. So this is demonstrating to us that color management is running in the background or because I'm using Adobe product, I'm using Ace to do all these color conversions in the background and it's showing us the colors that are supposed to show on the screen. What this is also telling us is that even if you shoot with a file that's tagged with sRGB, you can certainly open up in these programs and you're always going to be seeing the correct color at any given time. So you don't really have to worry about keeping everything the same throughout the entire workflow. I will open my second setup image to show you. And rather than showing four, I'm just going to show you two. In this sample, we can see that the Adobe RGB one has a much more saturated orange in the sky, and the sRGB one has less of that. What I'm going to do again is a demonstration showing you the soft proofing. So I'll go view, proof setup. I will click on custom. This way, I can guarantee that I'm seeing sRGB, and I have that enable. You may not see a lot of differences now. In fact, they look the same at this point. However, if I toggle it off, you can see that there is a difference in the orange hue in the sky immediately. In other areas of the image, you may not see much of a difference there. That's because most of the colors in those other areas are contained within the sRGB color gamut. So that means there's not much more saturated than that color gamut can show, which is why you're not seeing too much of a difference. Now let's move from landscape to skin tone. I'll bring her a little bit closer so we can see a little bit easier. And we can see right now that both of these images look very similar to each other. In fact, they look almost the same. And even though one of them is tagged with Adobe RGB, the other one is sRGB, the image or the colors in these files are not as saturated. They're more monochromatic in nature. So sometimes, even though you tag a file with a larger color gamut, if the colors are not in the file, they're not going to really show a big difference between two different color gamuts. What I'm going to do right now is soft proof the Adobe RGB file. So now I'm soft proofing that file to sRGB and we can see that the changes are pretty much not even noticeable. I have another skin tone sample to show you and this will show a drastic difference between these two color gamut. 
So a lot of what we're doing right now would greatly depend on the files that we bring in to do the demonstration. For example, this one shows a clear difference between the two. Adobe RGB one on the left has a much more deeper saturated blue. The mid-tone of her skin has a slight more orange and also her hair. The purple hue or the magenta hue is a little bit more saturated as well compared to the one on the left, which is sRGB. If I go in and enable soft proofing, you can see right away that the colors matches pretty much the one on the right, which is sRGB. We can see a drastic color change between these two files pretty much immediately. This is demonstrating to us that CMM, or because I'm using Adobe product, Ace is working in the background doing all these color conversions so that anytime I can bring in a file in the Photoshop, tag with any color space, and even though my display is calibrated to panel native, I'm always seeing the correct colors. Now let's get out of Photoshop because Photoshop is a program that we can go in and set the color space that we want to use. However, if we go to a program such as Lightroom where we really can't choose the color space we want to use because Lightroom does all the management on its own, throughout the entire program, Lightroom uses Profoto RGB. And when you go into develop module, Lightroom uses a modified Profoto RGB called Melissa RGB as the color space. Does this really change the way how we're working with CMM or ACE in for this matter? Let's have a look. So rather than showing you all the four color gamuts I have exported this file to, I'm just going to show you two, Adobe RGB and sRGB. So let's take a look at those two files side by side. We can see right now that the result is still the same. The file tag with Adobe RGB is showing a much more saturated color, while the one on the right is the one tag with sRGB and is showing a less saturated color. What I can do is Take this file and go into develop module, right? A moment ago, I was in the library module. And what I can do here is enable soft proofing to which I will soft proof this to sRGB. And when I toggle between these two files, you can see right away that there are no differences between the two. This is sRGB, this is the Adobe RGB. So the files pretty much look identical. However, if I turn soft proofing off, now we can see that there are differences in saturation in the sky. So obviously ACE is working in Lightroom as well. A couple things I want to mention here is that if you do the soft proofing, for instance, on this Adobe RGB file, let's say you do the soft proofing to sRGB and you come up here and click on create proof copy, this proof copy will only show you this color gamut when you're in the develop module. If you go back into, for instance, the library module, it won't show you that color anymore. It will show you the full gamut of files. You can see here, I'm toggling back and forth and I'm still seeing a very saturated file. However, if I go back into develop module, because I have proofing turned on, it does show us a more desaturated file matching with the sRGB profile. And you can see the differences between the two there. This same principle would apply to the other files as well. And I'm going to do a demonstration for all the same group of images briefly here so that we can see between the two. And again, Adobe RGB, sRGB. If I go in here, enable soft proofing, we can see that the tones get desaturated right away, especially in the sky. Same thing with the images of our model. For instance, this one, we have soft proofing on right now. We'll turn that off. If I toggle between these two, there's not a lot of difference, but I already told you that this image is more desaturated in nature, so you're not going to see that. And in this last demonstration, we're going to see a lot happening. So this is the Adobe RGB, and this is the sRGB file. So when we see the two side by side, we can see that Adobe RGB has a much deeper saturated color compared to the sRGB one. Soft proofing can be applied on this file in a very similar way, and you can see that the color changes are very similar to what you're seeing in Photoshop. I hope this demo was able to clarify some misunderstanding that we may have about display color gamut that we use in calibration and also introduce us to a important concept in color management as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art Retrust.